Hey guys, how are you doing? So in today's video we're going to have a look at the velocity triangle and for that I have a simple model here. The velocity triangle is something that's uh, one of the fundamentals of blade aerodynamics. It's a little bit complicated but if you bear with me we should uh, get around this. I can close this to make it a little bit bigger and so yes this is our uh, turbine and when I start I have wind coming here which is this uh, white arrow here and of course the wind makes the, the turbine rotate. And if I stop the simulation, what we're going to be looking at is these things here, these little airfoils on the blades. So I can right click and open the velocity triangle. And this is what we're looking at. So this looks a little bit complicated now. There's a, there are lots of things, but we're not gonna look at everything. We're not going to look at these two here. And I'm going to remove all the vectors right now and we will go through them one by one during the video. So what is important to understand here is that this, this drawing that we have here represents this arrow. So as the blades are rotating, this little airfoil is also rotating with it. And that's what we are seeing. So anything that happens here on the, on the turbine, we're going to see here. Okay. So the first thing that we can uh, have a look at is the wind velocity. So if I click here, we see that the wind velocity is this arrow here. And that's what we have here. If I decrease the wind velocity, which I can do here, I see how this decreases also, and if I increase it, this uh, increases again, okay? The second velocity that we're going to have a look at is the rotational velocity, which is this red vector here. So the rotational velocity is due to the fact that the blades are rotating, and because the blades are rotating, this little element is exposed to a wind that comes towards it, because this is moving into the wind. So as you can guess, if I open a velocity triangle at uh, closer to the root, this um, rotational velocity is a little bit shorter. If I go back to this one, we can see that it's, oh, sorry, we can see that it's a little bit longer. Okay, so I will come back to the previous one. So that's what we're looking at. Now there is a third velocity, which is called the induced velocity, and that's this one here. I'm not gonna go into details into what the induced velocity is today, but basically what it means is that there is a difference in the air velocity that is coming towards the airfoil here at the leading edge, and that's leaving after the airfoils, after the trailing edge. And this difference we represent with the induced velocity. There's no air particle traveling at this velocity, but it's just a tool that we use to, to explain this difference in, uh, in velocities. Okay, and if I sum up all these three velocities, what I get is the relative velocity, which is this green vector. Okay, I can just remove these components and just keep the relative velocity. So what we're interested in now is when we have this relative velocity coming here, what type of loads are applied to our wind turbine? The first load that we have is called the lift force and it's this one here. So it's this green vector. The lift force is perpendicular to the to the relative velocity and it's called lift because on an airplane that would be the force that lifts the plane upwards. And the other force that we have is the drag force, which is this one here. It's very, very little. It's very small compared to the lift. It's about 100 to 200 times smaller if, if the wind turbine is well designed. And this one is in the same direction as the relative velocity. So I can show you these two forces on the blade as well. So I can click here and select lift and drag components. And what you see now here on, on the turbine are the same, uh, the same vectors as you're seeing here. So the green one here, that is the lift force. And the drag force, well, it's actually so small that we don't really see it. I can go into wireframe mode and zoom in a little bit. And here we can see there's some tiny little arrows which are the drag force which again is much smaller than the lift force. Okay, I can get back to this mode. And um, now if I sum up the lift and the drag force, what I get is the total force, which is of course almost uh, the same as the lift force since the drag force is so small. I can remove the lift and the drag now. And the next thing that we want to know is out of this total force, what contributes to make the turbine rotate? And that's what we call the torque force. And the torque force is the projection of the total force in this plane, in the rotor plane. And that is the force that's going to make our turbine rotate. 
the other component would be like around here. That's what we call the thrust force. And that's a force that pushes the turbine backwards. And again, I can show you here. If I remove the lift and the drag and I turn on the thrust and the torque, we can see here the orange uh, vectors, which, has, which are the torque force, and the blue vectors, which are the thrust force. And as you see, the, thr the torque force is the one that makes the turbine rotate, while the thrust force is pushing my, tur my turbine backwards. So it's interesting to see that even though we have such a high lift force and such a low drag force, we still have much more of the th much more th thrust force, this blue vector, than torque force, which is this uh, this orange vector. And of course, we would like to have more torque because that's what makes our turbine rotate. But the way turbines are designed today, we always get much more thrust than torque. Okay. So I can sum this up uh, quickly. The first thing that we have, the first thing that we have is the wind velocity here, and the rotational velocity due to the blades rotating. We also have an induced velocity, which is the difference between the incoming wind here and the wind that's leaving here. So if I sum these three forces, I get the relative velocity, and this relative velocity is going to give two loads on the airfoil. One is the lift force, which is perpendicular to the relative velocity, and one is the drag force, which is parallel to the relative velocity. The sum of these two forces gives us the total load, which is this black vector here, and the total force we can divide into a thrust component, which is this one here, and a torque component, which is the one that makes the turbine rotate. Okay, and uh, well, that's all for today. So this is not easy stuff. If you have any doubts or suggestions, just uh, leave us a comment and we'll reply as soon as possible. And in future videos, we'll go more in details into some of the things that we've seen today. So great, thanks for watching and uh, see you around. Mm -hmm.